Have you ever wondered why the exact same kick drum sounds fantastic in one track and terrible in the next one? Well, it might have to do with the fundamental frequency of your kick drum and its relation to the key of your song. Now, you might have heard that generic advice of always tune your kick drum to the root note of the song. But guess what? It's not always that simple. So in today's video, I'm going to finally end the debate whether your kick drum needs to be tuned to your song or not. So let's start with a perfectly tuned kick drum. This is what it sounds like. Just a very simple 909 kick generated with Punchbox, one of my favorite kick synthesizers. And what I've done here is I've picked the 909 module, deactivated everything else, except for a safety limiter that doesn't do anything. And here I've activated key track. And key track just means it will play exactly the MIDI note that you have penciled in here. Now our song is in G minor, so I've used G1 as the root note. How can you now test that here the fundamental frequency literally is G1? Well you activate the span analyzer and take a closer look. So here you see the fundamental frequency of that kick drum. It's pretty much spot on G1. So G1 corresponds to 49 hertz. This should be the perfectly tuned kick drum for that song. Let me play the whole piece for you and listen to this in context with the kick drum. So the big question is, is G1 actually the best note to use here? The cool thing about key tracking with this bass drum synthesizer is that we can just transpose the MIDI notes and the sound that comes out of the 909 module will correspond with that MIDI note. We select all of them and then we can transpose them. So this is G1, let's try out an octave higher. Okay, so to my taste, it gets a little bit more punch, but it's also a little bit too tonal overall. I hear too much of the kick drum's tone in the music. But the G1, for whatever reason, to me sounds a bit too deep and it's almost combating with the rumbles. If you play kick and rumble together, I mean, everything that's pretty much left over is a little bit of click from the kick drum. And so what we can now do is we try out different intervals and see which one fits best. And yes, you can also go outside. The scale is completely fine. You just listen to it and really hear what's going on here. Let's test this. I will just move my way up. Well, I don't know about you, but my favorites were A1 and C2. So let's put that in context. What does this mean for the question whether or not your kick drum needs to be the root note of your song? Well, I would say in many cases, picking the root note as a starting point is a really clever idea. But then I would not limit myself. I would try and see if there's a better fit. And in this example, to me, it was really obvious that not the fundamental G1, but also not the octave G2 made sense. I actually preferred some of these options in between. Yes, being in key overall and not picking some random interval is probably a good idea, but even and then I would challenge that. I would really go through one octave and pick the one that just resonates with you the most on an emotional level. But let's take this a step further now. If you're like most producers, you probably don't synthesize every kick drum from scratch. And that's perfectly fine. If you want to learn more about that, you can check out this video I made about synthesizing kick drums. But 99% of artists just pick a kick drum out of an existing sample pack and that's perfectly fine. The problem is that some of these sample packs promise you that they include the root note of every sample in the sample pack. Now this is in theory a great idea, but how does that look in practice? Let's check it out. So here I've picked a kick drum sample that is coming from a really popular techno sample pack. I've changed the original sample name because it is a great sample overall. I don't worry about this being an issue at all, but I just wanna show you. They included the G tuning in the naming of the sample pack. Now let's listen to this in solo and check out what the span meter tells us. 
And you can see that the dominant frequency is 68 Hz, which is somewhere between C sharp and D2. The fundamental frequency, if we remember correctly, should be G1. So what does that tell us? Well, most likely that sample pack curator or creator designed the sample with the root node G to begin with. And then there was a lot of processing, maybe a little bit of layering, compression, saturation, creating overtones, obviously during that process. And this ended up in a sample that in the end does not have this root node as the fundamental frequency. In my opinion, you should be really wary of sample packs that tell you that this is the root node and always double check if it really sounds great. Now, in context with the song, versus the original 909. Well, to me, this other kick drum just sounded better, even if it's not directly tuned to the specific root note of that song. So my recommendation for you is to not follow any generic YouTube advice that tells you always do this, always tune your kick drum to the root note of the song, because it probably is BS and doesn't really make sense in the grand scheme of things. Use your ears and this is exactly what we're going to do now. We're going to shoot out a couple of kick drums and just pick the right ones or the right combination that makes sense for our track. And if you got any value out of this video so far, then consider subscribing to the channel, consider liking this video. It shows me that I'm on the right track, providing helpful stuff for you. And it also helps you because the algorithm will suggest better videos videos to you. So here I've picked five different kick drums. The first one is the 909 in key as standard G1, then the sample pack tuned to G kick drum, and then just three random kick drums that I just like for specific reasons. And we'll just listen to this and shoot out which one resonates best with the track. Now, to me, a lot of them are strong candidates. I personally like this kick three quite a lot. It's a bit more grounded, a little bit more saturated, still has a lot of punch. So I have no idea what the root note of this kick drum is, but it sounds great. So 63 Hertz B1, which is interestingly, if I remember correctly, one of my favorite frequencies that I picked from the original 909. There's one more trick that I want to share with you. If you happen to like the character of a specific kick drum, like I did in this example, but you still feel like it's not connected enough to the song, what you can do is that you can combine this with a really clean 909 or sine wave generated layer that plays the fundamental frequency of the song. And this is what I've done here. So I've picked this kick three, but also put in a 909 layer below that and the 909 layer just to prove it is on the G1 and this to me sounds pretty good. Now this production overall is not mixed and also the kick drums, there's no processing whatsoever apart from what is already part of the sample or in the 909 itself. But this is a really nice combination. It's a bit too loud overall in the production hall, but just so you could hear its connection to the song. I've made this tutorial to prove that listening critically and thinking critically is always worth it. And this is how I want you to look at YouTube tutorials, also my tutorials, of course. And I want you to go into this world and use your ears, use your taste, sharpen it and grow as a music producer. Now, I hope you got some value out of this. I want to see you in the next video. Again, leave a comment below and let me know what you think of this approach and your preferred way of using kick drums. Let me know in the comments and I will see you in the next video.